Listen closely. These calming sounds and serene images come from the Sarah P. Duke Gardens. Located at Duke University, over 300,000 visitors walk through annually. But it wasn't always like this. How were these popular gardens created? I'm a volunteer here at Sarah P. Duke Gardens. Can you tell me about the creation of the Duke Gardens? Creation of the Duke Gardens was an idea by Frederick Haynes. He lived over on Flowers Drive and he would walk along Flowers Drive to his work at the medical center. This was originally a garbage dump and his idea was to start a garden. So he approached Sarah P. Duke back in 1934 and she agreed at that time, shortly after the Depression, and she was a widow, to give him $20,000 to start the garden as long as he put her name on it. Since the first flower beds bloomed in 1935, the Sarah P. Duke Gardens have changed a great deal. Today, the Duke Gardens serve Duke and Durham communities and visitors from across the world. Renowned for its staple attractions like the flower beds in the terraces, the water lilies and the koi in the fish ponds, and the big easy sculpture in the south lawn, the 55-acre garden is widely acclaimed and recognized for its beauty. I think the Duke Gardens is the number one spot to bring your family if they're here on vacation. In fact, it is the number one spot to bring your family here. Uh, I call it the crown jewel here of Durham, and it's a phenomenal garden. And it's just a nice place for people to come and learn about plants. Um, we actually, it's, it's got three purposes. It's purpose to wow you, second is to educate you, and the third is to run experiments. So we have several experiments we're doing throughout the garden. Duke Gardens is a really special place uh, to a lot of people in Durham, to a lot of people in the region, and um, it's one of the few places that I think in Durham that you can come with your family. It's totally free. Um, it's quiet and serene. Also, we've got tons of cool events. Uh, we've got children's education programs. There's adult education programs. So there's something for the whole family. Beyond the main attractions at the Sarah P. Duke Gardens, there are other interesting and beautiful areas that are not visited as frequently, like the Charlotte Brody Discovery Garden. So the Discovery Garden is our uh, sustainable sort of agriculture display garden. Um, basically, it's encompassing everything that we can do to promote sustainability. So we have a rain garden, a bioswale, which all that helps to capture rainwater and filter um, to replenish our groundwater system. Um, we have a pollinator garden, we've got bees, we have a resident beekeeper, Nick Schwab, who is really awesome at keeping the bees for us. Uh, here at Duke Gardens, I'm an assistant horticulturalist. So I'm in charge of maintaining the areas around the Doris Duke Center, the uh, Woodland Garden, White Garden, and where we're at right here, the Discovery Garden. Uh, I assist Lindsay Fleetwood, our horticulturalist, and our curator, Jason Holmes, in everything you see out here, we maintain in some way, shape, or form. So bees, honeybees in particular, are great because it's an educational fact, uh, help people learn why they're important for the environment and our food supply. And it's also just a fun teaching experience for kids to be able to see inside of a hive, a queen, stuff like that. Um, we've got an herb garden, uh, which is like many different culinary and medicinal herbs from all over the world. And mostly uh, the part that I'm mostly into is the vegetable garden at the top. And so far we've donated over 11,000 pounds of produce since the garden started in 2012. Um, this year, currently, we've donated over 500 pounds of greens and vegetables. So that is my favorite part of the garden because it's helping us give back to the community in an even more tangible way. So, and many, many of our, our field trips use the Discovery Garden in particular because that's such a tactile area. Um, there's a lot there that's designed to be able to be interacted with in different sort of sensory modalities. So there's lots of smells, lots of touch 
touchable plants um, that are really interesting and engaging um, for visitors of all ages. Um, but we especially use them in, in children's programming. When most think about the Sarah P. Duke Gardens, they think of the gorgeous tulips and floral scenery sprawling across each level of the terrace. While this gorgeous sight attracts many a viewer to the gardens, the hidden gems within make it all the more special. While few may know about the quiet discovery garden tucked away in the back, even fewer have stepped foot into the Piedmont Prairie, located in the Bloomquist Garden of Native Plants. The Bloomquist is the smallest of the gardens here, and it was created in 1968 by Hugo Bloomquist. He was a first professor of botany, and his idea was to showcase the native and endangered plants of the southeastern United States. And I believe there's about a thousand different species in that garden. Um, they're all native and endangered. And the latest addition would be the Piedmont Prairie. And in that project, they went out through the Piedmont, which are endangered here in North Carolina, and collected seeds. From those seeds, they grew into small plants and they planted it about three years ago. That project has been expanded into the uh, RTP, RTP with Syngenta. They've created a Piedmont Prairie on their campus. And just recently we burned it, and by burning it, you're actually rejuvenating the plant so it will stay a prairie and not grow into a forest. From prairies to terraces, the Duke Gardens would not be the breathtaking center of relaxation, education, and enjoyment without the dedication of the individuals working behind the scenes. Like the horticulturalists, curators, educational programmers, researchers, and volunteers. So the next time you step into the gardens, maybe take a moment to acknowledge all the hard work that has gone into creating your favorite spaces. Wander to the hidden corners, the peaceful prairie, the chicken coop. Let the volunteers and horticulturalists you encounter know how much you appreciate them. And most importantly, Never stop exploring and discovering the beauty beyond the picturesque brochure. There is so much more to these gardens than meets the eye.